Hello everybody and welcome to my shop. We're going to, uh, we've been spraying this engine compartment down with some degreaser and it looks like it's doing a pretty good job. I'm going to let it soak. This is the stuff here I've tried and uh, Let it soak and I'm going to get some hot soapy water and try to wash it down. Also start uh, dressing some of the wires out of the way and getting rid of that uh, overflow tank. Some other things. And then in preparation of putting that engine in. So stay tuned. got the uh, engine bay as clean as I believe I'm going to get it it's a uh, it's a whole lot cleaner than it was before and I believe I've also got some of the wiring situated I'll do a brief overview of that uh, I got some cloth uh, electrical tape I used that I'm going to make my uh, wrap my wiring up make sort of like harnesses with them but uh, 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 some of the main changes I've done to the 12 volt uh, is to change it over to 12 volt. And in preparation of changing it over to 12 volt, uh, I'm still retaining the original fuse panel. And uh, it's going to uh, still be utilized just like it was in the OEM. Uh, what I'm one main change I'm doing is I'm not taking the headlight uh, elect current load through the uh, dash uh, light switch anymore. Basically, I'm going to use the dash light switch to control this relay, and I'll let the relay switch the high of uh, 12 volt to the uh, bulb, the headlights. Uh, I'm doing that basically is uh, I removed the voltage feed. From the from the switch, the dash switch to the uh, high low beam here, and I'm feeding it up to the relay, and so that way when the switch is, light switch is pulled on, it will energize this relay, and then I'm going to throw 12 volt through the relay back down to this uh, high low switch, which will go through the fuses and out to the headlights. Uh, the switch uh, could handle the 12 volt load because the uh, actually the GMC that I'm already running 12 volt on uh, is doing that. Uh, but uh, I'm going to change the GMC to a relay too. I've decided since I'm doing it on this one also. It's such an easy swap, and uh, the light switches, especially the OEM light switches, are uh, are. are one of the better electrical devices in the trucks and you really want to continue to utilize them as much as you can i've heard a lot of horror stories about the uh aftermarket uh, especially the ones from across the uh, ocean uh not working right or not fitting right or uh, uh certain circuits not working good so uh to continue to utilize that light switch 
one good uh, way to, uh, uh, to, uh, to keep its longevity going is to uh, not have as much load go through them. And by controlling a relay instead of having the load go through is a good idea. So anyway, that's my thought on that. Uh, in this case, the light switch on this truck is 70 years old and still functions. So we want to keep it that way. This, uh, this block here is a, was a, uh, another standard uh, fuse block I picked up uh, a couple years ago, and I've modified it uh, to, uh, for new circuits. Uh, I didn't want to get underneath the dash, nor did I want to have the wiring hanging out, so I decided to go with another uh, uh, fuse box and then modify it. Uh, these three fuses here, the bottom one here is for the... Uh, uh, power port inside the uh, inside the cab. This middle one is for the tack, and this top one will be for the powered uh, the thermos the uh, the choke uh, the electric chokes that are on both the carburetors that are be on the 235. This uh, upper terminal strip is uh, these two on this side. These these two or four terminals are common to uh, 12 uh, uh, constant 12 volt hot uh, the way uh, the way the trucks wired the heavy duty uh, battery cable goes and ties down to the starter and then this other cable here let me get it here you see that the big eyelet here he goes in to the cab and ties down on the uh, uh, on the uh, battery side of the ammeter and then on the other side of the, the load side of the ammeter, let's call it, comes out to, and I tie it down here. Previously, that wire went to the battery lead of the regulator that mounted up here, of which I've removed from the uh, truck now. I'm no longer utilizing the regulator. So uh, I've tied it down here, and the uh, battery hot feeds off of that are going one to the horn, one through the relay to the headlights and then this other terminal will go down to the alternator output and uh, the alternator has what's called an isolation diode or diodes that keeps it from discharging uh, uh, into the battery uh, or the battery discharging into the alternator when the engine is off uh, the old six volt and regulator type uh, charging systems, you actually had a relay inside the regulator that did that. Well, it's a uh, diodes do it in the alternator. So anyway, that's that. I'll finish wrapping up this uh, part of the harness that goes across the uh, top of the radiator to the lights. Uh, once I get the clip on, because I have to run two more wires, well, one more wire across, that's for the turn signal. And I'm going to bundle that one in, in there. So, also, I'm just going to retain the 6 volt uh, uh, horn and relay to start with. And uh, the idea is to see if it'll work. It's possible that after the first time I try it, it burns that relay up. If it does, I'll just change it to a 12 volt relay. The 6 volt uh, horns will work on 12 volt. Uh, just a little bit more higher uh, uh, squeal I believe and I got a little bit of body work patching done I've patched in some uh, some metal here and I'm gonna finish tack welding that in uh, this is all made a whole lot easier with the truck with the engine out uh, there's just so much you can do when uh, you've got uh, free access and uh, so anyway, that, uh, that's kind of a short version of what we've got done. So this bay is now ready for the engine, and that's the next step. problems with YouTube on uh, unauthorized uh, music or sound or anything else.
front mounts are in, so I'm going to have to go underneath and uh, maneuver probably with the uh, crowbar to get those two rear bell housings. But uh, uh, she's in, looks like. I'll uh, show a few close-ups. All right. There's the front motor mount, and you can see that right there on the right. That washer needs to go through the big hole, so I'm going to maneuver to get him through. I tested it before I dropped it to make sure it fit through the hole, so it's got to be perfect. And uh, let's see, you can't really see back there, maybe on the other side, but the bell housing mounts are on top of the frame cross member, and uh, there's one hole that goes down through the, the mount to the front, uh, cross member that I've got to connect. But anyway, I think I'm going to have to do a few more, a little bit more fine tuning, but it's in. I didn't record most of the pool because I ran into all kinds of little situations. The, I guess the one I was not expecting to run into was the uh, column shifter linkage up here at the top. The way it was now, one of the best working assemblies on this truck was the shifter. It was silky smooth and never missed a gear, no scraping, no nothing. It was really good. So anyway, let's get that out of the way. This Fenton dual intake manifold sticks out too far right here at this corner. And it was interfering with my uh, second and third uh, shifter right there. Well, actually, that's the first and reverse. The first and reverse and also the second and third. I adjusted uh, the second and third out and I loosened the box and rotated it just enough to clear the fit in here. But that wouldn't work for the longer linkage in the back for the uh, first and reverse. So actually if you look, the hole right there where my finger, that's the original hole right there. I ended up having to drill another hole in the arm. Uh, in order to get to it, I had to disassemble this. Uh, but I drilled another hole in the arm and moved the linkage down. And then I bent it out a hair to clear. And uh, we're doing good now. So I believe that'll do. I'm not going to cinch down the, uh, those uh, safety clips yet until those cotter pins until I'm 100% uh, sure. I had to bend this one out just a hair too. But... Uh, it's amazing what you run into with a, a supposed uh, uh, drop-in uh, upgrade. Now, if this was still the single carburetor intake and manifold, I would probably be running now because the exhaust would have bolted right up and I wouldn't have had any issues with the, uh, uh, the shifter. But anyway, going inside... The transmission is connected. There's the uh, there's the ball collar, and uh, remember I did the adjustment outside the truck. And to tell you the truth, it would have been a real pain to have done it in uh, underneath. And uh, all the linkages, the clutch, good strong clutch. Got about oh, about an inch play there, and the book calls for three quarters of an inch to an inch. So we're looking good there. So anyway, it's been a long day, um, but uh, what we'll do, I think I'm going to call, turn in, uh, turn it off for the day. I've got the, I'm going to change the fuel filter out. I want the, uh, the glass uh, bowl type on the top. So I got to connect my fuel, connect my wiring. I've even got to buy a battery. <laughs> but anyway. She's in, she's bolted up, got the new front motor mount there, the new rear mounts. 
and we're getting close. dimensions on the uh, this lift plate I made up uh, there really wasn't any plans on the internet I just uh, heard about it and just did some measuring all right these two holes here that they bolt into where the coil bolts onto the side of the uh, engine block is approximately two and a quarter inches uh, center to center the whole plate is three inches wide by seven inches long and this bolt hole I it's about one inch up from the bottom so when you bolt it to the engine block of course it's uh it's like this all right hopefully that uh, using those dimensions you can make up your own lift plate 